Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology Crack. This video is going to discuss the male reproductive anatomy. We will start external and work our way internal, also discussing some physiology and some functions of some of these glands and structures. So let's start with external anatomy. Here we have the penis. The penis is made up of three portions, the root, the body, and the tip or the glands. The glands is gonna be surrounded by uh, foreskin. This foreskin is called the prepice. Uh, most people have the prepice removed. Uh, this procedure is called a circumcision. Now, we're gonna look at the scrotum. The scrotum's function is gonna to be to help regulate temperature. Remember, the testes are producing close to a half a billion sperm uh, a day. So we're putting a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of energy in making sperm. So we want to regulate the temperature because one degree plus or minus can uh, detrimentally affect the efficacy or the quality or the condition of the sperm. So the two muscles we're gonna look at is gonna be the cremaster muscle. The cremaster muscle surrounds the spermatocord. Its function is to help pull the testes up uh, when it is, it is cold out, so it kind of pulls them into the body to keep the sperm at a relatively regulated warm temperature. When the temperature is warm out, the cremaster muscle will relax, descending the testes away from the body, again, uh, reducing the heat, so kind of cooling um, these structures off. The other muscle is the dartos muscle. Now the dartos muscle uh, serves a similar function with regards to temperature regulation, except it does it a little bit differently. The dartos muscle, uh, when it is really cold out, will create wrinkles in the scrotum. And what these wrinkles do is it reduces the surface area, thereby reducing uh, heat loss. When it's really, really warm, the dartos will relax, re uh, increasing the surface area so that uh, we can maximize heat loss. Now for the testes, we're gonna look at the, connect, the two connective tissue layers that uh, surround the structure. The first is the tunica vaginalis. As we work our way into it, we have the tunica albiginea. Now, if this was cut, if we had a mid sagittal cut of the testes, which this model does not, but if we did, we'd see that that tunica albiginea does extend into the, testine, into the testes, forming these partitions, these walls. They're called septa. And within those septa, what those walls are kind of housing are all those coiled seminiferous tubules, where is really uh, the bulk of that spermatogenesis, that sperm production is occurring. On the outside of the testes, we see hugging the margin is the epididymis. We have a head, a body, and a tail. Uh, the function of the epididymis is going to be to store sperm, allow for maturation, and uh, if that male is not ejaculating enough, we will recycle those worn out, old, or damaged sperm. Now, following the epididymis, we're going to follow up the spermatocord, and within here is going to be our vas deferens. Now, the vas deferens, again, is going to be a tube lined with stereocilia. Remember, sperm is not mobile yet. It cannot swim. There is no fluid for it to swim in. So we rely on smooth muscle contraction and uh, stereocilia action to kind of move the sperm towards the ejaculatory duct. Now, before we remove this portion, let's look at some more uh, structures on the outside. We have the bladder here. So again, in urinary, when we did urinary and we did cover this. We have our vas deferens, which is gonna to lead to an, an ampulla. Now that ampulla leads to the ejaculatory duct. Now the ejaculatory duct is going to be uh, the first combination of, well, the vas deferens and uh, our first of our three accessory glands. The one that we see on the outside is our seminal vesicle. And when we and we could talk about this um, a little bit and just say what its function is. It, it, creates and produces and contributes about 65% of seminal fluid. Uh, that 65% is gonna be primarily water, some mucus. We see that the seminal vesicle is gonna uh, create some fibrinogen. This is gonna help clot uh, inside the vagina. We're gonna produce some alkalinity solution to help neutralize the uh, acidity within the vagina. So some alkalinity, some alkaline solution, some really basic solution to neutralize the acidity of the vagina. We're also going to produce some fructose. That sugar is gonna act as a nutrient, as a type of gasoline to say, to power the motor, power that mitochondrial tail, the flagella of the sperm so that it's able to move. This gland you see here, again, for the seminal gland, it is uh, a pair, so we have one on both sides of the bladder. This next gland is the prostate. Now the prostate is a single uh, gland. It is not paired, it is one. It surrounds the urethra. It's about the size of a chestnut. Uh, it contributes about 25, 30, upwards of 35% of seminal fluid. 
This is going to secrete a, a little bit of an acidic solution that's gonna help clear the urethra of any leftover urine, any bacteria, anything like that. It's also gonna create and secrete seminal plasmin. That seminal plasmin is a natural antibiotic to help protect that urethra um, and keep it clear of any bacteria. Now, then we're gonna open this structure up so we can kinda work our way inside and see some more structures. So we can see inside, let's tilt this up so we can work our way in. We have the prostate. So here's our nice little prostate. You can see the prostatic urethra. So the part of the urethra that moves to the prostate. We have our ejaculatory duct coming into our urethra. Remember it's a urine and ejaculation is a shared tube. Here's our prostate. We have right at the base or bulb of the penis, we're gonna have a bulbal urethral gland. That contributes about 5% of our seminal fluid. It is primarily mucus to help lubricate the tip of the penis to facilitate entry into the vagina. The last thing we're gonna look at are the two erectile tissues found within the penis. Um, the upper one is called the corpus uh, cavernosum. So we have two erectile tissue bodies on top called corpus cavernosum, so caverns to fill up with blood to help maintain an erection. The lower one is called the corpus spongiosum, so a single erectile body uh, to uh, collect blood and again, maintain an erection. Spongiosum sounds like sponge. Now, while we're on this, uh, the spongiosum, the part of the urethra that travels through this is called the spongy urethra, also known as the penile urethra. Back here, we have a membrane. So from the, pros the prostatic urethra to this little membrane would be the membranous urethra, followed by the uh, penile, spongy, or um, uh, spongy urethra. And then we go out the external urethral orifice. So. This is our male anatomy. I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.